welcome to this uh, last FR which is uh, FR7 and this is the resource availability. So basic requirement is in just two lines. Ensure the availability of control system against the degradation or denial of essential service. So basically we need to uh, check whether components shall maintain essential functions in a degraded mode during a DOS attack. So what is a DOS attack? We'll see in uh, next uh, slide. So DOS attack is basically a denial of service attack in which, in which the service becomes unavailable for some time or for a long time simply so it shall provide the capability to report the current list of installed components and their associated properties uh, solutions shall include built-in controls for real time uh, detection of several type of DOS attacks alert information includes details on the source and target host as well as DOS attack technique being used enabling quick response before control system and components essential functions are compromised. So resource availability is basically we need to make our systems available in case of there is a DOS attack. So let's move ahead. We need to also in resource uh, availability it's uh, in the similar uh, point of direction where what we are thinking now. So it's about the to avoid single point failure and redundancy to enhance redundancy and fault tolerance. So we need to see like what is the uh, scale of our organization and what could be the impact if it gets down. So if the impact is very less then there is no need to think much in this direction but if the impact is huge like you cannot afford even a single uh, second or single millisecond of shutdown then we need to focus on the resource availability at a much greater extent so single point failures can exist at any level of your uh, um, control system so because security is usually being added to the ISIS environment an evaluation should be done to identify potential failure points uh, or a risk assessment done to evaluate each point's exposure so let us suppose if you are uh, you have a server and it has only single power supply so that could be a single point of failure if you have a network and it has only a single uh, link to connect all these controllers and to uh, cpus to processors to hmi and uh, field controller so that is a call like a single point failure in case if that link goes down uh, your complete communication will get cut off so these are some examples of single point failure so let us suppose if you have a, a server and in that there is no raid configuration is there so in case of the loss of the hard disk your complete data will get corrupt so that is also a single point of failure so there are several uh, single points of failure example which we can say so we need to uh, basically how what is the best method to find all the single point of failure we need to conduct a risk assessment and based on the risk assessment findings we need to pinpoint all those uh, points of exposure we need to uh, check uh, the cost versus impact analysis that what will happen if we do not improve uh, the redundancy of the solution or what what could be the impact in terms of the financial safety health and uh, reputation so uh, once those uh, risk assessment we need to prioritize uh, the most impacted uh, single point failures and we need to uh, improve them so this is one way other thing is that the redundancy and fault tolerance we need to ensure redundancy and fault tolerance once it is uh, once all those single point failures are identified so ics components or networks that are classified as critical to organization have high availability requirements so we already understood that we how we can find that which environment is more critical so let's uh, suppose that we identified some uh, zones or level size uh, uh, more critical and then uh, it should have a high availability requirement one method of achieving high availability is uh, thorough the use of redundancy so if uh, a server is more critical and it has only one power supply so make it a two power supply or just add one uh, power uh, switch which can have the two power supplies from two different sources and then it can converse to a single power supply if it cannot be done or otherwise you can just add one more power supply if it is a modular server Additionally, if a component fails, it should fail in a manner that it does not generate unnecessary traffic on ICS or does not cause another problem elsewhere. So cascading impact of one failure to another impact should be avoided such as cascading event we can say. So fault tolerance uh, is the same uh, like uh, if there are two disks are there each are copied to each other. Uh, 
in a red configuration one one zero or a red configuration one or red configuration five six or higher red configurations then in that case what happens even in if your one disk fails there won't be any impact on the other disk so this is one example of example of fault tolerance or clustering if you do in uh, our servers that is an example of fault tolerance now let's understand what is denial of service because we talked earlier so the definition uh, of denial of service is that it is an attack meant to shut down a machine or network making it inaccessible to its intended user so it is a type of attack which exhausts your resources making it inaccessible to any of the intended or in users so dos attack accomplish this by flooding the target with traffic so how the main mode of uh, attack is to flood the traffic or sending it information that triggers a crash or sending it such information that triggers a crash in both instances the dos attack deprives legitimate users that is, legitimate users are the employees members account holders uh, services softwares software services users operators technicians uh, plant uh, plant head shift in charge these 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 user profiles of the service or resource they expected so basically what it is doing it is uh, removing the it is giving a type of loss of control on your control system or loss of control you cannot control your control system anymore because it is uh, crunching it is creating a resource crunch by utilizing all those existing resources the resources it could be the bandwidth it will pull uh, choke your bandwidth it can do a network storm it can uh, or it can utilize all the existing ports of your computer it can do uh, it can uh, increase your cpu load for beyond 100 percent that it is not able to receive any traffic it can fold your ram so that it can not process any further information so these are the types of the denial of service attack so basically we'll see here three types of denial of service attacks one is buffer overflow attack so this is most common DOS attack. The concept is to send in, send more traffic to a network address. So if you have a network address, we uh, attackers will send more traffic to network address than the programmers have built the system to handle. So uh, there is a capacity of a system to uh, handle some addresses, number of the addresses. But uh, attackers, what it will do, uh, they will send more traffic to address so that it can create a overflow. In, it includes attacks like ICMP flood or ICMP SYN flood. So these two uh, types of attack can be done to do overflow attacks. In addition to others that are designed to exploit bugs specific to certain application on network. So uh, these two like ICMP flood and SYN flood. So what is ICMP flood attack? ICMP flood attack is leverages misconfigured network devices by sending a spoofed packet that ping every computer on target network instead of just one specific machine. So uh, this is ICMP flood. ICMP is the ping message. So it will just give a ping ping command, but it will ping every computer on the network, but instead of just one machine. So this, this can be done if your, if your network is not segmented properly. It is a flat network. So what attacker will do, he will just list the IP addresses from one to all. And then he give the ping command with a big packet size and then what it will do it will flood all your all your bandwidth all your network all these things with the ping command the network is then triggered to amplify the traffic because if ping response is not received then it will it will keep on uh, all these devices keep on pinging to each other in in terms of finding the real uh, devices so this attack is known as smurf attack or ping update so once this is initiated then your complete network will turn into a disaster ending into the denial of service of the network services. Another is the uh, SYN flood. So send, it sends a request to connect to the server but never completes the handshake. So continues until all open ports are saturated with the request and none are available for legitimate users to connect. So it what it will does if, if you know how TCP handshake happens. So in that there is a ACK, there is a SYN. So what it does, it will send only the SYN messages. So once SYN is done, the computer will keep on accepting, keep on uh, responding uh, or waiting for the ACK, but it will keep on accepting the SYN messages. So all the open ports will become saturated and none will be available for the any other um, legitimate users. So this is the SYN flood. So these are basically some types of the DOS attacks. You can read about these in details. There are lots of materials available on the internet also. Now, uh, another is the control system backup is also type of resource uh, availability. So we need 
to uh, keep the availability of the latest backup of PLC control system other application on system server like we, uh, so that we can restore it uh, within the recovery time objective what whatever is set by the organization centralized backup management systems are in place for quick restore so if there is something happens we need to uh, quickly restore our servers and it should be tested and validated the process as well as the data so it should be tested and validated so there are lots of solutions available in the market like uh, where veritas is there and there acronis is there so we can implement uh, any of these solutions or or there are some proprietary inbuilt solutions by siemens and even person so we can use that for their automation servers uh, as well and application servers as well otherwise if something is not available we can go for the commercially available of the self uh, softwares like acronis veritas or uh, version dog so this is all about the resource availability and we covered all the foundational requirements as per uh, mandated in um, 62443 so this is a very good like if you want to initiate or do cyber security in ot you need to keep this frs in front of you and you need to design uh, as per the risk assessment output you need to define and design these solutions and implement so that it will make it more secure so this is the end of this module we'll meet in next module thank you